section, we look at another method for determining the volume of revolution, um, what we call the shell method, which is the basis for 6.5b, our last lesson in the AP Calculus AB curriculum. So the shell method is based around the idea that we revolve a function um, f of x or uh, functions that are dependent on x around the y-axis now instead of around the x-axis, okay? You may recall that in 6.5a, we took functions and revolved them around the y-axis as well, but those were functions of y instead of x, okay? So when you're dealing with functions of x that are revolved around the y-axis, you're going to use the shell method. Whereas you're, if you're working with functions of y that are revolved around the y-axis, you will use um, the washer method, okay? So essentially, if your variable matches up with um, your axis of revolution, you're going to use the washer method, whereas if your variable of integration, in this case x, does not match up with your axis of revolution, in this case y, you're going to use the shell method. And we'll get more practice with this in class if you're um, still a little bit uneasy with this, okay, um, to get you used to it um, with in-class practice and discussion problems, okay? So right now we're going to um, look at how we use the shell method to determine the volume between two functions, f of x and g of x, that were evolved around the y-axis, okay? So here's the basic idea, is that if we take this area between f of x and g of x and we revolve it around the y-axis, we're going to get a volume here, okay? Um, so what we can do is we can break this volume up into cylindrical shells, okay? A cylindrical shell of thickness dx, okay? Um, so if we want to find the volume of each shell, what we can imagine doing is taking each cylindrical shell and unfolding it until it's just one sheet of thickness dx, okay? So what would be the length of this sheet right here, okay? Well, this cylindrical shell goes around in a circle right here, so the length of this circle is what we call the circumference of our circle from geometry, okay? So the length of our sheet is going to be circumference of our circle here, of our cylindrical shell, okay? So our circumference in this case is going to be 2 pi x x in this case is going to be our radius because x is going to be the distance from our axis of rotation to the cylindrical shell. So our circumference is going to be 2 pi x. As for what our area, or excuse me, as for what our height of our sheet is, okay, our unrolled sheet, our height is going to be the difference between f of x and g of x, so our height is f of x minus g of x, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the volume of this cylindrical sheet that we've unrolled here, okay? So the volume of the sheet, dv, is going to be equal to our um, width of the sheet, which is going to be the circumference, again, of our cylindrical shell, times the height of our sheet, times the thickness of the sheet. So it's going to be circumference times height times dx, okay? So as a result, what we can write down is dv is going to be equal to 2 pi x, which is our circumference times f of x minus g of x, which is our height, times d of x, which is again our thickness. So what we're going to do now is the same procedure as we've done before, where we add all these dv's together for each cylindrical shell at each um, unique x value, which again amounts to an integral. So our cylindrical shell method tells us that um, the volume v from x equals a to x equals b is going to be 2 pi times the definite integral from a to b of x times f of x minus g of x. Okay, where again x is our radius and then f of x minus g of x is going to be our height. So this equation right here gives us the volume for a cylindrical shell rotate about the y-axis. So let's take a look at a sample problem here. Okay, what is the volume? Oh, it looks like I have this in reverse here. So, oops, mistake on my part. So we'll go right here. Example one, the cylindrical shell method. Okay. What is the volume of the region enclosed by y equals negative x squared plus 6x plus 5 and the x-axis when we revolved around the y, when we revolved about the y-axis, okay? So again, we're dealing with functions of x right here, we're revolved around the y-axis, so we're going to use the cylindrical shell method. So the first thing we need to do, as usual, is determine our points of intersection. In this case, we're not given bounds of integration, so that means we have to set um, the x-axis, which is y equals 0, equal to y equals negative x squared plus 6x plus 5 which gives us 0 equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 5, or um, as a result of canceling out negative signs, okay, x squared minus 6x plus 5. We just switch the signs on each of our terms right here. So as a result of factoring, we're going to get x minus 5 times x minus 1 equals 0, or x equals 1 and x equals 5 are our points of intersection and thus our bounds of integration.
So now we proceed to second step as we've been doing, where we use x minus, where we use x equals 2 as a test point, or any point between x equals 1 and x equals 5, to determine what our upper height function and our lower height function is. In this case, all right, for x equals 2, we're going to have y equals minus 2 squared plus 6 times 2 minus 5, which gives us y equals 3. And then, of course, for the x-axis, we're going to have y equals 0. So as a result, y equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 5 is the upper height function, and y equals 0 is the lower height function. Okay? Do, do, do. So now we proceed to step four, okay? So now we're going to use our equation in order to evaluate our volume here. So we have v equals two pi, definite integral from x equals one to x equals five of x times our upper function or our upper height function minus our lower function, lower height function, which in this case is gonna be negative x squared plus six x minus five minus zero, okay? So as a result, um, we're going to expand, the, or we're going to distribute this x right here to get 2 pi times the definite integral from x equals 1 to x equals 5 of negative x cubed plus 6x squared minus 5x. Applying the fundamental theorem of calculus now, okay, we're going to get 2 pi times um, negative x to the fourth divided by 4 plus 2x cubed minus 5x squared, and we take the difference of this antiderivative from x equals 1 to x equals 5, which again, I'm going to skip all the plugging and chugging because that's something we're used to for the sake of time. And what you're going to end up getting as a result of all this plugging and chugging is you're going to get 2 pi times 32, which tells you the volume generated is 64 pi. So now for axes other than the y-axis, okay? So suppose now a vertical line, x equals x naught, is now used the axis of rotation instead of just the y-axis. The radius will no longer just be x. So as seen on the diagram at right, we have the following modifications for a shell method, okay? So... In this case right here, the modification we're going to make is that if we have a um, line, if we have an axis of rotation, okay, x over x equals x naught, okay, where x naught we can think of as r, all right, I have r right here, we can just think of it as x naught, okay. What's going to happen is that if our line is to the right of r right here, okay, so if our line right here do, 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 do. or excuse me, if our axis of rotation is to the left of this slice r right here, okay, then that means that our new radius is not going to be x, but it's going to be x minus x naught, okay, because right here our typical distance is x, okay, and then we have an x naught right here that is um, being subtracted away, okay, so we're going to have x minus x naught right here, okay. And then right here, if our axis of rotation right here is to the right of this region R right here, then the radius is going to become x naught minus x. The idea being is that this distance right here is x naught, and then this distance right here is x. So our distance right here from our region to this line is going to be x naught minus x. We have to subtract x away, which is going to leave us with x naught minus x as our new radius. Okay? So, again, if this is all seems a little bit esoteric and abstract, again, as you know the deal by now, we'll get more practice with these problems in class.